In this lesson, we will learn how a spreader beam can be used to reduce or even eliminate horizontal forces on slings. We've learned in the past that a sling in the vertical position has the highest capability of lifting a load. In this case it's vertical and we call this 90 degrees at the bottom. When a lift is made from one hook point to two or more connection points on the load, the sling angle when it's less than 90 degrees increases the forces exerted on that sling. So we can see this angle is less than 90 degrees and this angle is even less than that one is. So as the sling angle gets smaller the forces that are exerted in this sling increase. They get larger. Another way of stating this is that for any two slings, for a given pair of slings, the farther apart they are connected, the more force is going to be exerted on that sling itself. So we can see we've used this and this sling and connected them closer in this example. The angle is nearer to 90 degrees and there are less forces exerted in this strap than there are in the one that is connected further apart. The reason there is more force exerted on this sling as opposed to the other sling that's at a higher angle is that the horizontal forces that are exerted here add to the weight that's being lifted of the load and the sling has to bear both of those forces. The lifting force and the horizontal force all add up in that strap. Therefore, if we make the sling angles closer to 90 degrees, there will be very little horizontal forces exerted on this strap. In this example, there is a hook connected to a spreader beam. The spreader beam is connected to the load with two vertical straps, 90 degrees, 90 degrees. The result is a sling angle of very close to 90 degrees, which is a vertical lift. That is the position that a sling will lift the greatest load because the horizontal forces are not present and they do not have to be added to what the sling is feeling as it exerts to lift that load. A spreader beam has to be made strong enough to support the load that we're putting on it. A maximum lifting capacity or working load limit is marked right on each spreader beam. In this case our working load limit is going to be five tons. It's very important to never lift more than the specification on the spreader beam 
and what it is rated for. If you lift more than that, you have a safety violation and many problems can result. So only lift that safe working load or working load limit, the maximum that it is capable of safely lifting. So what have we learned? First of all, a lift at an angle of 90 degrees will lift the most because there are no horizontal forces being exerted on that sling. The second thing we learned was that as the sling angle gets smaller, the forces that are exerted on that sling get larger. The opposite is true as well. As this angle gets closer to 90 degrees, the less force we're going to put horizontally, so therefore it is going to be able to lift a larger load as it goes nearer and nearer to 90 degrees. The last thing we discussed is that if we properly connect a spreader beam to the load, we will eliminate all horizontal forces if this angle is 90 degrees. So by properly using this spreader beam, we have been able to take advantage of the full lifting force of our strap rating. In the next lesson, we will learn how to calculate the extra forces on slings that are not connected at a 90 degree angle, but yet still have a spreader beam. For example, if we had it connected at an angle. How do we calculate what is the force on that strap?